Hello students, welcome to Arise Talent. So here, as you know, we are studying very important chapter of NCRT that is life processes in which I am going to tell you about the transportation. What is transportation? Transportation means the process by which the organs carry the absorbed food material or synthesized food material from the one place to the another. That process is known as transportation. So in our previous lecture, we have already talked about the transportation in plants. Now in this lecture, we are going to talk about transportation in human beings. So today our topic of discussion is transportation in human beings. Okay, so before starting this topic, I want to tell you that in the higher organism, the transportation of various products like oxygen, carbon dioxide and waste products from one place to another place is done by the proper transport system. Okay, so here as we are going to talk about the human beings, human beings are also count in the higher organism. So here thus we can say that the transportation of material in the human beings also take place by the transport system okay so first of all what is transportation the transportation means the process of transporting absorb food water and waste products from one place to another is known as circulation clear so let me mention the transport of the transport of absorbed food, water and waste material from one place to another one place to another is known as circulation okay so thus we can say that in the human beings as we are talking about the transportation in human beings so thus we can say that in the human beings a transport system carries the different uh, things like absorb food and water from one place or one part of the body to the another part and this whole process is known as circulation fine so and this circulation is generally done by blood only okay so here we can say that the transportation in human being is divided into two parts okay it has two parts so transportation in human being is divided into two parts one is blood vascular system one is blood vascular system and another is lymphatic system another is lymphatic system okay lymphatic system fine so generally if we talk about blood vascular system means a vascular system which has tubes which are filled with fluid to carry the uh, absorbed substance from one place to another okay so what is a vascular system generally a vascular system has tubes filled with fluid that Uh, that flows uh, the what we can say a vascular system that has tube which are filled with fluid which carries the absorbed food material from one place to another that carry that carries absorbed food material from one part 
of the body to another okay so here thus we can say it is given the blood vascular system it is given the title as blood vascular system because it has a channel or we can say it has a system that has tubes which are filled with fluid that absorb that carries the absorb food material from one part to the body to the another part so here especially in the human beings if we talk about the human beings then they have blood here the fluid is blood so thus we can say blood vascular system consists of blood blood vessels and heart okay let me mention here blood vascular system blood vascular system consists blood because it is the fluid which is filled in the tubes to carry the absorbed food material and helps to transport them from one part of the body to the another part then this blood is carried by these vessels okay and this blood is pumped by the organ that is heart so thus we can say that the blood vascular system consists three important parts if we talk about the lymphatic system then this lymphatic system has the following parts or it consists of the following things lymph lymph vessel lymph vessel okay and lymph nodes fine so as i told you that the blood vascular system has tubes which are filled with fluid and they carry the absorbed food material from one place to another place of the body so as well as as it contains fluid it's also known as blood circulatory system why because it helps in the circulation of absorbed food and water from one place to another this is the reason it's also known as blood circulatory system okay so what is the another name of blood circulatory system it's another name is blood circulatory system let me mention it's another name is blood circulatory system okay so hope it is clear to you that blood vascular system is also known as blood circulatory system why because as i told you a vascular system which has tube which are filled with fluid okay so here the fluid is what as i told you that blood vascular system consists blood and this blood is carried by these blood vessels okay so here the fluid is blood and blood circulates in the complete body of the human being this is the reason it's known as blood circulatory system clear so as i told you in the starting that transport of absorbed food uh, like a uh, food water and waste material from one part of the body to the another part of the body is known as circulation so hope it is clear to you that this is the reason it's known as blood circulatory system because blood flows from one place to or blood circulates in the complete body and carries the absorbed food material from the one part to the another part clear so now as we know that blood vascular system is also known as blood circulatory system then this circulatory system is again of two type open circulatory system and closed circulatory system we are going to talk about the blood circulatory system blood circulatory system okay so generally it is of two type open circulatory system open circulatory system and closed circulatory system 
okay. So, what are the meaning of these uh, open circulatory system and closed circulatory system? As I told you that blood vascular system or blood circulatory system has transport system, okay, because they have some tubes which are filled with, uh, which are filled with fluid which is known as blood to transport uh, all the absorbed food material from one place to another. So, here open circulatory system means when the blood flows in the cavity freely, okay, and it does not have such kind of circulatory system does not have vessels for the flow of the blood, okay. So, here we can mention open circulatory system, blood flows freely through the cavity, through the body cavity. Okay, and no vessels are present. There are no vessels to flow the blood. Closed circulatory system, here we can say that blood flows in the body through the different arteries and veins. Okay, blood flows in the body through the arteries and veins, okay. So, this is the difference between the open circulatory system and closed circulatory system. Such kind of open circulatory system is generally found in the invertebrates, okay. It is generally found in the invertebrates, invertebrates. So, we can say that open circulatory system is found in, in vertebrates, okay. And closed circulatory system is generally found in the vertebrates, vertebrates and beside it some in vertebrates like cockroach and crabs. In some in vertebrates. Some invertebrates like cockroach and crabs. Okay, so this is all about the open circulatory system and closed circulatory system. Now let's learn the difference between open circulatory system and closed circulatory system. Yes, here we are with the difference between open circulatory system and closed circulatory system. So, first of all, we are going to talk about their occurrence. So, open circulatory system is generally found in some annelids and most of mollusks and arthropods. As well as closed circulatory system is found in most of the annelids, cephalopods and some mollusks and all the vertebrates. As I told you, that uh, closed circulatory system is generally found in the vertebrates and in some vertebrates, okay. Now, what is the position of blood? Why we are talking about the blood? Because I told you circulatory system means it carries the blood, okay. So blood is circulated in complete body which carries the absorbed food material from one place to another. So, what is the position of blood here? Blood does not remain confined in the blood vessels and comes in leukine or sinuses where we are talking about the open circulatory system that in the open circulatory system blood does not remain confined in the blood vessels and comes in the lacune, lacune or sinuses. Now if you talk about the position of blood in the closed circulatory system then blood remains confined in the blood vessels okay here I already told you that blood flows in the body through the arteries or veins. Next is blood pressure. So, what is the, uh, what we can talk about the open circulatory system? Blood pressure flows, blood flows at the low pressure and cannot be regulated. In open circulatory system, 
blood pressure ki if we talk about the blood pressure then blood flows at the low pressure and cannot be regulated fine closed circulatory system in the closed circulatory system blood flows at the high pressure and can be regulated so if we talk about the difference on the basis of blood pressure in open circulatory system and closed circulatory system then in the open circulatory system blood pressure remains low and in the closed circulatory system blood pressure remains high this is the difference so here we discuss the few differences between the open circulatory system and closed circulatory system next difference is velocity of blood so if we talk about the open circulatory system then the blood flows at a low velocity in the open circulatory system blood flows at a low velocity make a point blood flows at a high velocity so in the closed circulatory system blood flows at the high velocity so what is the difference according to the uh, velocity if we talk about the velocity of blood then in open circulatory system blood flows at the low velocity but in the closed circulatory system blood flows at the high velocity okay next is exchange of material if we talk about open circulatory system then direct exchange between blood and body cells so here we can say that in the open circulatory system because blood flows freely in the cavity there are no blood vessels okay so what happens exchange of material take place uh, directly between the blood and body cells because there are no vessels okay vessels are absent in the open circulatory system if we talk about closed circulatory system then exchange of material occurs through the tissue fluid okay so this is the difference between open circulatory system and closed circulatory system next is respiratory pigment so when the respiratory uh, pigment is present in the open circulatory system then it is dissolved in blood plasma okay plasma is the part of blood and it contains most of the part of the blood here if we talk about the closed circulatory system then it is always present and is usually present in the rbcs and vertebrates for example vertebrates so as i told you closed circulatory system is generally found in the vertebrates and uh, in some cases of the invertebrates so here respiratory pigment generally present and is present only in the rbcs rbcs means red blood cells fine efficiency now next point of the difference is efficiency less efficient as blood takes more time to complete one circulation we are talking about the open circulatory system that open sur uh, circulatory system is less efficient because blood takes more time to complete one circulation okay because there are no vessels blood moves freely so this is the reason that open circulatory system is less efficient as blood takes more time to complete one circulation now come to the closed circulatory system then it is more efficient as blood circulation is completed in short periods right so this was these were the differences between the open circulatory system and the closed circulatory system fine now we are going to talk about the circulatory system and its component as i told you that it has generally uh just a minute let me explain you blood circulatory system or blood vascular system has the following components what were the blood blood vessels and heart i told you let me mention blood circulatory system or blood vascular system as well it's also known as blood circulatory system or blood vascular system blood vascular system it consists following parts what are they blood blood vessels and heart okay 
so first of all we are going to talk about blood we all know blood is red in color okay it is mobile and if we talk about blood vessels then these are the tubes like structures and generally they have the following parts heart heart is the organ which pumps the blood to the different parts okay so first of all we are going to talk about the blood blood is a mobile reddish colored let me mention it is mobile it is mobile this is the reason it can flow okay it is mobile reddish in color why it is reddish i'll explain you in this lecture only it is mobile reddish colored fluid colored fluid and we all know that this fluid carries the absorbed food material from one part of the body to the another part okay so it is the mobile reddish colored fluid that transport the absorbed food material absorbed food and oxygen as well absorbed food okay oxygen nutrients and supplies nutrients and supplies nutrients to different parts different parts of the body okay this is all about the blood blood is a mobile reddish colored fluid that transport the absorbed food material oxygen and supplies nutrient to the different parts of the body okay so now we are going to talk about blood let's learn about its components okay blood generally blood has uh, two main components one is plasma and other is blood corpuscles or cellular components okay so these cellular components are also known as blood corpuscles if we talk about the plasma then plasma makes 55 percent part of the blood okay rest 45 percent part of the blood is what uh, blood corpuscles okay let me mention here it's also known as blood corpuscles fine so here we can say that blood is reddish dark reddish in color it's mobile and it carries oxygen and absorbed mood, uh, food material and the other nutrients from one part of the body to the another part okay so thus we can say blood is very important so here if we talk about the components of the blood then 55 percent of the blood is made by the plasma or we can say plasma consists 55 percent part of the blood rest 45 percent part of the blood is blood corpuscles fine so what are the different parts of plasma it contains 90 to 92 percent of water okay proteins 7 percent or maybe less than 7 percent proteins such as albumin globulin fibrin is fibrinogen and prothrombin okay and rest 1% are waste gases salt hormones and food clear as i told you that blood uh, there are the two main components of the blood and major part of the blood means 55% of the blood is plasma so plasma contains all these parts means 90 to 90% part of the plasma is water and rest from rest of the part 7% or less than 7% is protein and hardly 1% is other substances like waste gases salts hormones and food if we talk about the blood corpuscles which makes the 45% part of the blood then there are bl red blood corpuscles which are also known as rbcs white blood corpuscles which are also known as wbc and platelets so here we can say that if we talk about the composition of blood then it contains plasma and blood corpuscles most of the part of the blood is plasma okay and it consists 
water, proteins and other substances. Rest 45% which is made by the blood corpuscles then it carries or it contains RBCs, WBCs and platelets. Now we will talk about them in the details in our next lecture. Till then take care. Thank you.